So the last step in PFTrack would be to export the files into Maya. Don't forget that if you have the PLE version, you can download the exported Maya files from the link below. The export node in PFTrack will allow you to export not only to Maya, but to any other file format that you need. So let's go into PFTrack and see what to do with the exported files, and we also go into Maya and see what to do with them there. So the last step of PFTrack would be to export this into a Maya file. As we said in the previous video, we're going to export this workflow, this workflow, as well as this workflow right here. So to each and every one of those nodes, I'm going to attach the export node. And these export nodes will allow you to export, of course, to any kind of possible format that you might need. Since we're going to work with Maya, then of course, we're going to check the Autodesk Maya 2011 ASCII. Click on Export Scene. Once I get the Export Succeeded warning window, then I'm going to repeat this process both with this export and this export. Now remember that both exports have different focal lengths. So let's export these files and we'll be back with checking the files in Maya. Once in Maya, we're going to open up the files that we exported. I'm going to start off with the 56 millimeter workflow. And once I open it in Maya, then we need to make sure that our camera is working properly with the image plane. So let's switch back to the quad view and under the quad view, we're going to switch the top view to the camera's view finder. Let's click on the show film gate and under the render let's change it to legacy default viewport. You don't have to change it to legacy default viewport if you're not working in Maya 2016 but since this is Maya 2016 it'd be best to switch Maya's viewport to the legacy default viewport. If we look in the perspective view now once the camera has been set up properly we can see that the trackers themselves are the one that move as expected because we took the animation of the camera and switch it to the group of trackers within PF Track. Now it's time to start setting up the geometry. Now this is the proxy geometry. Now the proxy geometry will ensure us that the work that we did in PF Track is the right one. Let's switch back to the first frame. And there's a couple of ways you can approach this. Either create a box and then rotate this geometry in order to match the grouping of the point cloud and the way that the point cloud is structured or another way would be to leave the box as is but take the group itself and then rotate it to match the orientation of the box. So I'm going to take my group and I'm going to take its pivot point. I'm going to snap the pivot point right to this tracker. So holding D on the keyboard and V and then finding the proper tracker in which our new pivot point will sit on. And now I can take the whole group with its new pivot point and while I'm still the translate tool I'm gonna to snap it to this corner right over here we can also turn off the grid temporarily and we can use the rotation tool in order to match both objects the geometry box to the box that we see in the shot after using the rotation tool as well as the move tool on the PF data exported camera what I can do now is select the box and then move its pivot point to the corner right here so holding D on the keyboard and V in order to snap. I'm going to snap the box's pivot point to this specific corner. Now it will be very easy for me to just take the scale tool and scale the box until it matches the box that I see in the scene. And a little bit on the Y. And the next step would be to take the box and middle mouse button click and drag into the grouped camera itself. But if we open up the grouped camera, we need to middle mouse button click and move the box again into the group that holds the animation of the point cloud. And the next step would be to take the translation and rotation we put on the group itself and reset it back to zero. Now, if we play the sequence now, we'll see that the box is following the box in the footage. We saw how the 56 millimeter solution gave us the best result, but just for the fun of it, let's go back to Maya and check and see if the 50 millimeter solution was accurate as well. 